Welcome to this reading on the short story in the flood by Kavari Shivashankara Pillai. Kavari Shivashankara Pillai is a famous Malayalam writer who won the Nyanapira Puraskar. He was a prolific writer who wrote many works like Thoti Udamagan, Osepinde Makkal, Chemmin, Kair, etc. Most of Kavari's works throw light on the history of the times in which they are composed. His fiction has often been compared with the works of Maupassant, Chekhov and other 19th century European masters of realist fiction. This short story in the flood or Vella Pokathil is one of Tavani's short stories which was published in his short story collection Pudumala in 1935. Please turn to page 66. in the flood the temple was the highest point in the village here stood the god neck deep in water 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 everywhere the villagers had all left for the mainland only those who on the boats had left a few behind to guard the houses there were 67 children huddled in the three rooms in the attic of the temple there were also three hunter and 56 men as well as dogs cats goats and fowls all living together in great empty no harbor Sagiri begins this short story with a description of what has happened during a flood as we all have seen flood is something which we don't have any control over and men dogs cats animals all they were living together with great amity without any cause and they were all gathered together in the temple which is the highest point in that place for two nights and a day chenna farai braved the flood alone he had no boat it was now three days since his land flood decided him to save himself Chenna had made a raised platform in the hut with coconut husks and poles at the first sight of the surging waters. He stayed indoors for two days, hoping the waters would recede. How could he leave the place so soon? In the plot were a few bunches of banana and some hay, and leaving the place would certainly mean leaving doors at the mercy of pilferers. So now we are introduced to the main character. Chenna Farai, whose savings are just a few bunches of banana and some hay, and he couldn't escape, and his landlord deserted him to save himself. Now the water had risen above the platform and sunk a portion of the thatched roof too. Chenna called out from inside, but who was they to answer? His woman, who was pregnant. Four children, a cat and a dog, his dependents, and he knew that his end and days was near, as it would not take longer than a few hours for the whole hut to be submerged. It had been raining heavily and incessantly for three days now. Chenna somehow got out of the hut by making a crack in the thatch and looked around. At some distance in the north was a catamaran. Chenna cried out aloud. to the boatmen luckily they heard him and started in his direction he quickly pulled out his woman and children as well as the cat and the dog to the crack in the roof by then the catamaran had drawn up so now we are introduced to the family of chenna pare his woman his wife who was pregnant and four children then a dog and a cat so he was lucky to spot a catamaran The children were clambering onto the catamaran. Chenna cha ko chenna heard someone shouting to him from the west. He turned around. Come on here. It was Maria Tara Kunyapen calling from his rooftop. Chenna hastily drew his wife onto the catamaran. The cat also leaped on the board in an instant. No one took notice of the dog who was still sniffing around in the western end of the hut. The catamaran started moving. It was soon in the mid water again. The dog came back to the rooftop. Chenna's vessel was now at some distance away from the house. He could see it flying away. He started mourning in great pain. 
making sounds like the cries of a hapless human being but who was there to hear him he ran around the house from end to end sniffing and whimpering so kept chenapare was lucky to have spotted this catamaran and they are safe but now the story starts the story of this lonely dog who was left behind he is whimpering he is helpless and he is hopeless and helpless human like a human being um, frantic in that place and from here on we find the life of this dog alone in that hut during the rain a frog who was sitting quietly on the rooftop was alarmed by all this unexpected noise it dived into the water in front of the dog's splash the dog started a shiver ran down his spine he stood there for a long time staring at the ripples the frog had created then again he started sniffing around here and there maybe he was searching for food now the frog leaped into the water after urinating into his nostrils this made him very restive and he started sneezing violently then he wiped his face clean with one of his forelimbs the torrential rain started again the dog huddled up and suffered it through his master had by then reached ambalapura night a huge crocodile floated past the house gently brushing its half submerged roof as it did so the dog lowered its tail in fear and started barking but the crocodile just moved off as though it hadn't noticed anything that hunger tormented animal wailed from rooftop peering out into the dark and cloudy sky his plaintive cry reached places far off the sympathetic winds got to get to distant land and those few on guard of the houses the soft hearted among them must have said listen to that dog moaning from the roof his master must now be eating his supper from the sea coast at the end of the supper as was his wont he might still keep a share for the dog the dog cried aloud continually for a long time then the cry became softer and softer before it stopped from some house in the north the man on guard was chanting the ramayana for some time the dog turned westward as though listening to the chant and then after a while he started groaning again and making loud throat-rending noises so tagri gives a minute details about the dog's behavior the silence of the night was rent again by the sweet chant of the ramayana now once again the dog remains silent a little longer for this time to listen to the mellifluous chant of the ramayana the gentle music seemed to dissolve into the whiff of a cold breeze now nothing was to be heard except the sound of the wind and the gentle breeze on the roof of chenna's dog was lying down its breath heavy on itself occasionally muttering something to itself in despair a fish popped up here and a frog leaped out leaped out there at which the dog got up to bark and growl by turns early morning the dog started roaring in low tones he was elaborating the notes of a raga fit to melt the hearts of the listeners frogs stared at him in amazement he in turn watched them swishing past him and singing under under water after swimming across in an angle he survived survived the thatched roof remaining above the water level they were his hope the old red desolate no fire burned anywhere he mouthed the fleas biting his body and occasionally scratched at his chin with his hind legs in order to drive them away the sun shone for a while he dozed off in the sunlight he jumped up and barked when the shadow of banana leaves swaying in the breeze fell on the rooftop then the clouds swallowed the sun it was dark once again the wind created ripples in water carcasses of dead animals were seen floating around in the waves they were moving in all directions they seemed afraid of nothing the dog looked at all that in great desire he growled a small boat was moving swiftly at some distance away from the house 
the dog saw it and got up wagging his tail. He watched it move till it disappeared into the groove of palms. It started drizzling. The dog sat down on his hind limbs, spining himself on his four limbs and gazed around. Helplessness read large in his eyes. The drizzle stopped. A small boat came from the house in the north and stopped near the palm tree. On seeing it, the dog wagged his tail and sighed and growled. The boatman picked a tender coconut from the palm and broke it and drank up the juice. He then rolled off. A crow perching on a tree at a distance swooped down on the rotting carcass of a huge bull. Even as the dog was barking at it lustily, the crow put its beak deep into the rotting flesh and started eating at it with an air of unconcern. After some time, having had its fill, the crow flew away. A green bird twittered from the leaf of the banana tree near the house. The dog became restless and barked. The bird too flew away. A colony of ants of floral water was washed on the rooftop. The ants were saved. The dog kissed them, thinking perhaps that they were eatable. At this he sneezed again and again, his face turning red and puffed up. In the afternoon, two men came that way in a small boat. The dog was grateful and barked and wagged his tail. He spoke to them in a language close to human speech. He stepped into the water, all set to jump onto the dog, onto the boat. See, here is the dog, said one of the men. The dog moaned in gratitude as though he could see the man simply. Let, let it be there, said the other. The dog opened his mouth as though he was chewing something and made some inarticulate sounds. He prayed hard and tried to jump into the boat. The boat, boat moved off. The dog roamed again. One of the boatmen turned back to go. That cry came out not from the boatman, it was from the dog, God. That weak and anguished cry was sold into the wind. There was nothing to be heard after that. That, except the interminable sound of waves, no one turned back thereafter. Only the dog stayed, peering at the boat, till it disappeared from sight. He climbed on the rooftop once again, growling, as if bidding farewell to the world outside. Perhaps he was trying to say that never again would he love the ma- humankind. So here we find this helpless animal cursing human uh, kind, the mankind, for deserting him. He laughed at the flood water and then he looked at the birds flying about. He saw a water snake frolicking in the waves moved towards him. The dog quickly jumped onto the rooftop. The snake sneaked into, into the crack in the roof left open by Chenna and family. The dog peeped inside through the crack and started barking gravely. Then he growled, a growl filled with fright for life and hunger. It communicated itself to the speaker of any language, even maybe to a resident of Mars, a universal language, a language of hunger, a language for cry. The night was terrible with heavy rain and storm. The roof started tottering in the way. The dog almost fell off from the rooftop twice. Then there emerged a long head from under the water. It was that of a crocodile. On seeing it, the dog started barking in great fear. There was also the sound of fowls wailing together from somewhere nearby. Where is the dog barking from? Haven't the people in here moved out? It was from a boat carrying loads of hay, coconuts and bananas that stopped near the banana tree. Boss, the dog is likely to leap down. And then the dog leapt down from the rooftop and the man who had scrambled up went straight down into the water. The other guy helped him into the water. By then the dog had swum back to the roof. He shook himself dry and continued barking with renewed fury. The thieves took away all the bananas in the plot. You will get it, they said to the dog who was barking his head off. Then they loaded the boat with more of hay. At the end of them, climbed onto the rooftop. The dog, not to miss this chance, bit him hard on the leg. He got a mouth full of flesh. The man shrieked in pain and threw himself back into the boat. Even as his friend gave the dog a blow on his belly with a wooden pole, the dog's wail tapered off into a faint whimper. The man, bitten by the dog, was crying in the boat, even as his friend was seen rebuking and consoling him before the two left the place. So during that night, something happened. 
thieves came to steal the bananas of the chenna paran and the dog is guarding his master's treasured bananas and uh, fought with the thieves it was quite some time before the dog barked again his face directed at the way in which the two had left it was close on midnight the dead body of a huge cow was washed at top the house the dog was watching it from the roof he didn't go down immediately the cow was being moved gently by the flood water the dog growled he tore open the roof thatch and slowly went down he bitted the moving body to bring it closer to himself yes he has got plenty he started eating at it with great relish it was an unexpected blow no sight of the dog and the cow floated off after a leap and a dive there was no sound after that except that of the storm that was howling away and the croaking of the frogs and the clamor of the waves otherwise it was quite silent the soft hearted guard did not hear the groan of the dog after that rotten corpses floated across the water here and there somewhere being eaten quietly by frogs there was no sound to breach the quiet no let up in the work of the thieves either all bare and empty after some time the hut went tumbled and plunged beneath the water nothing could now be seen about the vast stretch of water the loyal dog had guarded his master's house till the very end now he too was gone the house stayed above water until the dog's capture by a crocodile it was as if the house didn't go down before because of him now that he too had gone the house sank under the water and that we talked about the fate of this dog who was eaten by a crocodile who guarded his master's house till his death now the flood water started receding chenna came back swimming to his hut in search of his dog there under a coconut tree he found a dead dog's body gently moved by ripples chenna examined it turning it from side to side with a stone was it his dog one of its ears was missing and the body was all rotten and discolored the story ends in a very pessimistic tone the happening of a flood season is rendered in half-rending words by kagi